Welcome to the first part of your NEBOSCH certificate course. This part of the course, Unit 1, is made up of four chapters or elements. Element 1 gives an explanation of the reasons for managing health and safety effectively, including an examination of legal standards and an introduction to the principles of contractor management. Element 2 introduces the idea of health and safety management systems and how these are set out in organisational policies. Element 3 deals with a wide range of topics that sit at the core of effective health and safety management, such as health and safety culture, how culture can be improved, risk assessment, the development of safe systems of work, and emergency procedures and first aid. Element 4 gives an explanation of active and reactive monitoring, accident reporting and investigation, and health and safety auditing. The common theme that runs through these four elements is that they deal with management issues. They do not deal with the technical details of specific hazards or hazard categories, such as machinery, noise, haz hazardous chemicals, fire, etc. All of those topics will be dealt with later on in the second part of the course. These first four elements of the course are assessed by a written question paper or exam. Before you dive straight into element one, please stop and take a moment to read the introduction to unit one. You will find some useful information and tips on how to study effectively and how to revise and prepare for the exam. Now you might think that you know how to study, but I would still urge you to read these introductory sections. They might change your mind about how to read your course textbook and how to plan your revision time. The exam is two hours long and consists of 11 compulsory questions, each of which requires a full written answer. The first question is a long answer question that is worth 20 marks. The recommendation is that you spend 25 to 30 minutes answering this question. The remaining 10 questions, that's questions 2 to 11, are short answer questions worth 8 marks each. It is recommended that you spend the remaining one and a half hours answering all of these questions, which breaks down to about eight to nine minutes per question. There is no choice of question in the exam. All of the questions are compulsory. However, you can answer the questions in any order you like, and it's a good idea to answer the question that you like best first, and then work your way through the questions on this basis. To pass the exam, you have to score 45% or more. If you do not achieve the minimum pass mark of 45%, you will receive a referral and you will have to retake the exam. You might have a lot of experience of taking and passing exams, or you might not have taken any kind of exam for a very long time. Either way, it is worth introducing some basic exam skills that you should bear in mind as you work your way through the first part of the course. In the exam, it is very important to answer the question that is being asked. There are no marks given for irrelevant information or for information that answers a different question to the one set. There is a step-by-step -step approach that you can apply to all exam questions, which will help you break down and interpret the question correctly. First, read the question. Read it carefully. Take care, as it is very easy to misread words in the rush to get started. If the question has several parts, then read all of the parts. There may be things in the later parts which can help you understand the first part. Second, highlight the key words. The key words include the question word that's been used, such as what, why, or how, and any instructions given, such as explain or list, and other important words that direct the question. Third, look at the marks. Each question or question part will have a maximum number of marks indicated in brackets. For each mark to be awarded, the examiner will expect a piece of information. So the marks available give an indication of how much you will need to write and how long you should spend on this part of the question. Then reread the question. Read the question again to check that you've properly interpreted and understood it. As I said before, there are no marks available for answering the question that you think you see rather than the one the examiner asked you. 
Finally, draw up a plan. This can take the form of a list or a mind map that helps you unload information quickly. Jotting down a plan aids recall. It can help you remember key points. But it's also your reminder to stay on track as you write your answer. Label your plan and your answer with headings so that the examiner can see which is which. And do not cross out your plan. It can be awarded marks. When writing your answers, you must ensure that the structure of the question appears in the structure of your answer. So for example, if the question has a part A and a part B, your answer must have the same structure. Keep your answers to part A and B separate and label them so the examiner can see which is which. Remember to monitor the time throughout the exam. A 20 mark question should take around 25 to 30 minutes to answer. Each of the 10 eight mark questions should take around eight to nine minutes to answer. If you lose track of time, it is very easy to spend too long on a question and before you know it, you will have run out of time without answering all of the questions. The reality is that your ability to gain the general certificate depends on your ability to pass this exam and this does require some basic exam skills. The good news is that these exam skills can be learned. More information and help on the exam is presented in the exam skills section at the end of Elements 1 to 4 and in the final reminders chapter at the end of Unit 1. So make sure that as you work through the first four elements of the course and prepare for the assessment, you practice these exam skills because practice makes perfect. I hope that you enjoy Unit 1 and I wish you the best of luck with your studies.